Right, so you want to learn how to turn this image into this image, and I'm going to show you how. Let's go. So the first module we're going to work at is the Filmic RGB one, because this is all set in the scene revert workflow. Now, the only thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to click this symbol to auto-tune the levels in this image. That's all I'm going to do with the Filmic RGB one, which means we need to move on to the next one, which actually is the exposure module. But rather grabbing the exposure module here, we can just slide this to the right to add in more exposure. And in this case, in the highlights, and then that's all we have to do. Right now, here's where the fun part happens. So I'm going to add in the color balance RGB module. I'm going to activate that one. And first, we're going to the masks one. And I want to click this for the contrast gray fulcrum so that it automatically reads all the levels, right? Then we're moving to the four-way tab. And rather than adding in contrast here by decreasing the shadows and the highlights and then increasing the midtones, because that's what these sliders are about, I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to increase the shadows, I'm going to increase the highlights, and I'm going to slightly decrease the midtones. And then there's one more thing we need to do in this module, which is the master tab, and that is to add in some contrast, okay? We're not going to use this module to add in more color or to desaturate it because we have a different purpose for this image, right? Now, the next module that you need is the color calibration one. Now, we already have one because this is the scene referred workflow. So one is being applied automatically. So we can click this symbol, click new instance, and then we have a new instance of the color calibration module and that we can use for our effect. Now we start with the gray tab and we are going to make this black and white, but we're not going to keep this black and white, but I'll show you in a minute how we can change that. So I'm just setting the right values here till it looks great. Now I made a dedicated video on this and explained what these are about. Be sure to check it out by following this card over here once you're done looking at this video. Now let's go to the brightness one and vintage photos are a bit more dark, right? So I'm going to decrease the brightness of all these three channels and I'm going to use the same values. Except for the last one, I'm keeping this a bit lower. Right, once that's done, now we're going to apply that effect, that color effect. And that's actually called a colorize module in Darktable. Now here's the fun part, right? If we activate it, we see this and that looks absolutely horrible. It's also not the color that I want. You can change it to any color that you want. So in my case, I want to change it to around 16% to give that sepia kind of look. I'm changing the lightness of it, but I'm keeping the source mix as is. And I want to change the hue till it matches the sepia color, which in my opinion is this. But like I said, this looks horrible. This looks like a sheet of paper that's been put on top of this photo. And I actually want this color to be baked in the photo. So I'm going to click this uniformly and I'm going to change the mode from normal to, in this case, hard light. There we go. And that looks a lot better already. Now I hear you thinking that why are you choosing hard light and not soft light or anything else? Well, let me first explain to you what the difference is, right? So here we have the normal again, and that's actually the default blend mode. And that goes for every module in Darktable. And in that mode, the pixel values of the top layer simply cover the pixel values of the layer beneath it. So there's no blending or interaction between these two layers. The effect is that the top layer's pixels are displayed as they are, completely replacing the pixels of the layers below it. And you can use this when you want to display the top layer without any blending effects. Now, if we change it to the hard light mode, that combines the effects of the multiply in the screen modes. And it darkens the colors if the top layer's pixel is darker than 50% gray and lightens the colors if it's lighter. It effectively uses the top layer to add in some contrast. Now, the effect is that if the top layer's pixel value is lighter than 50% gray, the image is lightened as if it were screened. And then if the top layer's pixel value is darker than 50% gray, the image is darkened as if it's multiplied. A 50% gray in the top layer does not change the image. And you can use this, for instance, for this photo, but you can use it for other photos to add in strong highlights and shadows, giving a more dramatic contrast to the image 
which is good for adding texture and detail. Now there's another one you can use as well, which is overlay. And you see a very small change between these two. And the overlay mode is kind of similar to the hard light, but it just tends to produce softer effects. All the while it still combines the multiply and screen modes, but in a way that it affects the contrast more subtly. So if you think that the hard light effect is too strong, you can change it to overlay and vice versa. I'm going to keep it at hard light. Now, because we are working on a vintage photo, I want to add in some grain as well. So I'm going to add in grain, click this just to activate it. And then we can change these values to the values that we think are appropriate for this image, right? So I'm going to keep it around 4266. In this case, I'm going to keep the strength not on 25%, but I'm going to change it to 50% to make it more strong. You'll see more noise or grain being added in the image. And I'm going to keep the midtone bias as is. Now then we're moving to the next module, which is the local contrast module. Let's activate it. And then let's increase this slider. And you see that the effect becomes much more stronger the more you put it to the right. I'm going to put it around 170%. That will look fine. We've got the highlights and the shadows, which we'll keep as is because we already have a lot of contrast in this image. But I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to, in this case, soft light. So I think this is a bit too strong color-wise. So I'm going back to the colorize tab. And this sometimes happens when you edit an image. I'm going to decrease the saturation. You see, it was way too strong. So I'm going to put it on. 17% and then this is the final result. So let's check it before and after again. I'm going to take a snapshot for the sake of this tutorial. I'm going back to the orientation module and here you have it. So here's the original, here's the after and I hope you guys like it. See you next week.